Hi friends! Welcome back to the Avocado Toast Budget. If you're new here, my name is Lexa and today we are going over my top tips to help you budget whenever you have ADHD. As I have gotten older and have done more research on ADHD and the symptoms of it and especially how it manifests in adults and specifically adult women, I have realized that so many of my struggles around budgeting and paying off debt were related to having ADHD. I talk about this a ton over on Instagram and whenever I bring it up, I get flooded with DMs from all of you asking me for some advice on how to navigate budgeting when you have ADHD and how to overcome some of those obstacles that are in place. If you don't already know, I actually have a master's degree in psychology and I specifically focused on autism and ADHD, so I love talking about this. And I have some really helpful tips when it comes to managing your money with ADHD that completely changed my life. I am also really excited because today's video I am partnering with Digit to talk about direct. We will talk more about that here in a minute, but let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that I recommend if you are trying to navigate budgeting while having ADHD is pretty much like the foundation of all all of my tips, which is to automate wherever you can. I don't know about you, but I often cycle through interests. So I'll be really, really interested in something, especially like a new hobby for a week or two. I will dive straight into it. I will be convinced that that is the thing that I am going to be obsessed with and love for the rest of my life, just to end up kind of fading out of interest pretty quickly after like a week or two. And then I never touch or think about that item again. And this happens a lot with people who have ADHD and it can happen with budget budgeting as well. You know that feeling that you are finally ready to crack down, sit down with your finances, you get this huge plan figured out, you are dedicated to sticking to it just to kind of not think about it again after a week. Instead of working against that, work with it. I am a huge advocate of automating wherever you can. This includes automating all of your bills, your investments, and your savings. Because the less time and energy that we have to put into something over the long term, the more likely we are to actually stick with it. And one of my favorite resources for this is Direct. I was so excited when they reached out to me telling me about this new app that they are launching. It is perfect for people with ADHD or just anyone in general who wants to automate their finances, but still reach their savings goals and make sure all of their bills are paid. They have officially opened the waitlist for Direct and I will have that linked down below, but I am super stoked because I have been trying it out the last couple of weeks and it is amazing. I so wish that I had had this resource in high school and in college because I truly think that I would have never ended up in credit card debt in the first place. When you set up all of your finances through Direct, it automatically allocates your money in three different places, saving, spending, and bills. And the best part is you can customize all of your savings goals. So if you have been here for any amount of time, you have probably heard me talk about sinking funds and how much I love them. Those are all of the non-monthly expenses in life that we wanna save for on a monthly basis, like your car maintenance or holidays. You can include these in the app and Direct will make sure that you reach those goals. You can also make sure that all of your bills are set up to be paid and Direct will set money aside to make sure that you have the money to cover those bills whenever they come around. And then once that money is allocated toward your saving and toward your bills, Direct gives you daily updates about how much spending money that you have left. And that is your discretionary spending. I have touched on this before in some videos, but I love this idea of making sure that all of the rest of your money is set aside and you know exactly what it is going towards as far as your necessary expenses your bills, your savings goals, and investing, and then having one place where you can look to see how much discretionary spending you have to spend on the fun things, and Direct does all of this for you. This is perfect for those of us with ADHD because when we have the spoons to be able to sit down and set up the app, it will run in the background for us and give us those notifications every single day that we need to make sure that we are staying on track. I am truly in love with this app and I cannot wait for you all to try it. So make sure that you join the waitlist down below. That way you can get access to it whenever it comes out. Speaking of having one place to look when it comes to your spending, my next big tip for budgeting whenever you have ADHD is to listen to your budget, not your bank account. Okay, listen. 
it's no secret that those of us with ADHD struggle with object permanence, which basically just means out of sight, out of mind. And believe it or not, this can play a huge role in our budget, even if you are rarely ever or never dealing with cash. Okay, you know that feeling? It's finally payday, woohoo! You have a thousand dollars in your bank account, you look at your bank account on payday and think, wow, I am rolling in cash. I have a thousand dollars to spend. So then when your friend texts you and asks you if you wanna check out that new bar that has finally opened up downtown that has those super fancy overpriced cocktails, you think, why not? You've got the money for it, you might as well spend it on yourself. So of course, if you are going out post parallelogram, you've gotta get a new outfit. So you go ahead and you run to Target thinking you'll just pick up a new shirt, it'll be like 10 or 20 bucks, but then you kind of get sucked in because you have your card and you start seeing all these cute things and then suddenly you're spending like $150 at checkout, but that's okay because you still have like another $850 left to spend. Except what you don't realize is that you have forgotten about all of those other expenses that that thousand dollars has to cover. Like your car insurance, your empty tank of gas, your internet bill, or the fact that your fridge has not been stocked for weeks. And before you know it, it's Monday and you have $2 left until payday. Again, which isn't for another 12 days. That is because our brain doesn't see those bills coming because we have no physical representation of it. Out of sight, out of mind. And that is why I highly encourage a budgeting system where you look at your budget to see how much you have to spend, not your bank account. And I know this can sound kind of weird, but I promise it's revolutionary, especially if you have ADHD. Because chances are, if I look at that big number in my bank account, I am going to feel like I have tons of money to spend. And even if I'm conscious of the bills that money needs to cover, I still have that mindset of a huge chunk of money, which makes me feel like I have more money to spend. Whereas if I take a look at my budget and see, oh wait, this thousand dollars needs to cover some of my rent and my utilities and that vet bill that I have coming up. And really when all is said and done, I only have like $50 left to spend on fun money. While this can be a humbling feeling, it is good to know this information so that you can make the right decisions for your money to make sure that you've got yourself covered. So maybe you end up deciding that you just wanna text your friend back and see if they just wanna pick up a bottle of wine on their way over and watch them Netflix. The next tip I have revolves around impulse spending. Now let's be clear here, impulse spending is not just something that people with ADHD struggle with. This is a huge issue for a lot of people, especially in the US where it's so easy to just do that one click, buy now, same day delivery for Amazon orders. It's a lot harder to impulse spend when you have to decide to get dressed, get ready, get in the car and go someplace before you can ever spend any money than it is to be sitting on the couch scrolling on your phone, watching TikTok, see something cool, and then within 30 seconds, it's in your cart and on the way to your door. But what a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of times, impulse spending is directly related to emotions. There have been statistics that have shown that 31% of people have said that they shop to increase their mood, and 53% of people say that they have shopped to celebrate something. So with those stats in mind, it's very clear that spending money is related to our emotions. My biggest tip is to give yourself the chance to take a step back, slow down, and think. I have a hard and fast rule that any non-essential purchases that I plan on making on Amazon have to spend at least 24 hours in my cart if not more. Because what usually happens is after 24 hours, I have forgotten about that thing, it's hanging out in my car, and the next time that I go to purchase something and I see that there's something else in my car, I realize that I've completely forgotten about that thing and it would not have been worth the cost that I was going to spend on it. And I set this rule for myself ahead of time with no exceptions because I want to give my brain a chance to take a step back, regulate my emotions, and see later on if I actually want that thing and if it's worth the price that I was about to pay. Because oftentimes I find that the thing that I had in my cart, I was just buying for the hype or to cope with one of my feelings. This also goes for impulse purchases related to the hobby that I am fixated on that week. People with ADHD often cycle through fixations. That's actually one of the misconceptions about ADHD is that we are just all over the place and we can't focus on anything. But in reality, many of us actually struggle with hyperfixation for short periods of time. We will get really excited about a new hobby or new adventure and wanna throw ourselves into that. And oftentimes that means spending hundreds of dollars on that thing because in the moment we're convinced that this is going to be the new thing that we love forever. And then once we've spent all that money, oftentimes a week or two later, 
we're not as into that thing and we've moved on to the next. And of course, there is nothing wrong with exploring hobbies, but unfortunately when we do it in this cycle where we spend a lot of money on it to start just to end up kind of putting it to the wayside, it can really cost us financially. Because trust me, at one point or another in my life, I have truly been convinced that I was going to start a slime shop or an Etsy sticker business, or I was going to personalize bullet journals or start a redecorating service. But before we get into the next point, if you're enjoying this video and you're learning something cool, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm, helps boost this video to the top. That way more people can find this content. Also, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below and push that bell notification that way you never miss an upload and uh, let's go ahead and get into our next point when talking about budgeting and ADHD I think it is really important to also talk about dopamine as people with ADHD we are often very motivated by these dopamine hits that are often triggered by new and exciting things we really like new routine can often get boring and we can become uninterested in things again relating back to the point I was just talking about where something seems really cool at first and then you end up not being as to it as you thought that you were. But since we understand that connection, we can use it to our advantage by creating small, realistic goals. Let's be honest here. If all of your money is going toward goals that are 20 years, five years, or even a year into the future, you are going to lose interest. Of course, those goals are incredibly important. I talk all the time about the importance of investing, which for many of us is 20 plus, 40 plus years down the road. But you need to balance out those medium and long-term goals with short goals that you can accomplish quickly. Saving up for a new curling wand or a road trip with your friends or the concert that's coming into town next week the whole idea is that you constantly have something in your budget that you are looking forward to. I think that it is extremely important that this is something that you are excited about. This will keep you motivated to keep going. Even when other parts of your budget feel monotonous and out of reach, you have something that you can keep coming back to. And last, but definitely not least, are visuals. Visuals, visuals, visuals. Okay, so remember that object permanence that I was talking about earlier? It comes into play here too. We oftentimes need visual reminders reminders of what we are doing. So luckily there are so many amazing free printable resources for visual saving and debt payoff goals. Actually like a year ago I made a lot of them as well and I have a Google Doc for them. I will just link them down below. They are all free. They're just things that I made on Canva but the whole idea is that you print them out and you track your saving and debt payoff goals in a way that you can see your progress and you can also be reminded by looking at that every day what goal that you are working toward. I highly recommend that you hang this somewhere up in your house that you see it and I double recommend that you move it around frequently because what can often happen even if we put something on the refrigerator or on the front door is that our mind gets used to it and we start overlooking it. So every week go ahead and just pop that in a new location and give yourself that reminder of what you are working toward and what this is all about. These are also really awesome because they can give you that hit of dopamine that you need whenever you have reached a new milestone in your goal and you get to fill in the next bubble or line. These give you a visual of where you are going but also how far you have come. So that is it for today's video on budgeting tips whenever you have ADHD. I hope that you learned some really cool things in here. Make sure if you did to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm, helps boost this video to the top. That way more people can find this content and I will see you all next time. Bye.